everyone. Uh, my name is Yoko. Um, well, thanks for coming to for coming to the summit. I'm my day job is a partner uh, at this venture firm called Andrews and Horowitz. So I lead early stage investments on developer tools in front of AI. I'm also a developer myself, so I write a lot of open source software nights and weekends. My most recent creation is this MCP light control repo where it allows you to install a MCP server on your cursor um, agent. So it controls your light and sends you Morse code. So imagine that when a cursor agent is down, it will tell you down in Morse code. Um, but today I'm here to talk about MCP middleware. So you might be wondering what is MCP middleware and what is middleware to begin with? So middleware generally is defined as a horizontal layer uh, between client and services that provides a lot of functionalities. So things like uh, you know, intercepting a request, rewriting it, transforming it, uh, authentication. Like if you remember back in the days for API platforms, every single API has a different way of uh, you know, like logging as well as authentication. Is it JWT? Is it OAuth 2 like? Um, API middleware back in the days solved all of that. Um, and then it makes me wonder what does it look like for MCP and if there's truly a layer for MCP middle layer, uh, middleware. So let's talk about MCP middleware actually. Why do we need it? So how many people here have um, created a MCP client before? Raise hands. Oh, actually, a lot of people here. Um, amazing. So if you have done work on MCP client, you usually realize that there are two parts of the infrastructure you have to handle. The first part is a agent loop. You have to uh, tell LM how to think, what's the agent loop you need to run, uh, how long it needs to think. If you use cursor today, if there's a max thought mode, uh, it would be thinking forever. Um, the other part of work you actually need to implement always in the MCP client uh, is a part where I call integrations. So technical details such as uh, I need to uh, pick a tool. I need to uh, push the agent to pick certain tools over others. I need to parallelize the tool, uh, things like that. That um, the integration part is actually very hard to get right. Like from authentication to logging, you know, to debugging, to actually, you know, surfacing the runtime metrics. Um, and for infrastructure folks, uh, for people who kind of worked in you know, software for a while, we know that the core business logic scales very differently from you know, the higher level infrastructure that actually serves around it. And this is why I do think there's you know, a world where we have middleware that actually centralize a lot of these functionalities between client and server and between server and third party APIs. Um, we're already seeing this today, actually. If you are building an MCP client, it's very likely you have installed one of the services out there that does service proxy. So what it means is that instead of having to install MCP servers one by one on your cursor client, you can now install one MCP server and it will proxy all of the requests to one too many MCP servers. You may also have run to this other use case uh, I call tool parallelization. So imagine uh, you're on cursor client uh, and then you want to search for how MCP middleware works uh, and if it's a ca ca category yet. What you will do is to tell coding agent, hey, I want to search for this thing, please research it and then come back to me in 10 minutes. Um, in this case, what the coding agent could do under the hood is actually firing off a couple of different tool calls from uh, calling Firecrawl to calling Perplexity to doing map reduce on aggregating all of the returned knowledge. So for every MCP client, it's likely that you will implement one of these kind of logic. Uh, and I think there should be middleware to uh, you know, streamla uh, streamline that. So authentication is also top of mind. Today, authentication is very simplistic. As a developer, it's not too difficult to authenticate MCP servers. You literally put in a JSON blob and then you get a token from somewhere and it magically works. But what it doesn't do is actually more dynamic runtime-based authentication. So can this agent access to this service at this time? That doesn't exist yet. And then there should be a centralized service to do that. Lastly, um, uh, it's very tough of mind because when you know Cloud4 was launched yesterday, there was a very cool demo of the Cloud4 agent, you know, called Law Enforcement or FDA. So in that case, we want a logging uh, service to kind of tell us what was the tool the agent picked, why did it pick it, what was the context that was passed to it, 
Um, and then later on, like, why did it, you know, what kind of tool it actually executed? So if we could dive even deeper on middleware, uh, so what are the features that could be useful here? Um, so I categorized it into two buckets. So the first bucket is um, agent-facing middleware. So things like uh, between MCP client and MCP server, uh, things like access control. For example, if you're building a coding agent, what kind of tools can it actually get access to and for which users? Um, there's also rate limiting. I actually tried this out earlier. Um, I was testing out this MCP client, I'm not gonna name the name of, but I was able to set up like sending off 100 requests to a particular tool, which basically DDoSing that service. Uh, from a tool builder's perspective, we should probably put in some rate limiting uh, on the server side or in between client and server. Another very interesting feature, if you're thinking about implementing this open source, that would be really great, uh, is user preference-based tool use. If you're on cursor today, uh, I'm sure you have gone into the cursor setting and you have said, oh, please execute shell commands or please do not execute shell commands for me. But this is a very binary choice. And when you think about uh, what you need to implement every time you implement MCP client, this is always there. So user preference and then how to lay it over to a different MCP client would be very top of mind for developers. Lastly, batching tool calls. Um, we have started to see a lot of background agents. And by that, I don't mean the agents you need to, you know, uh, take care of in real time, agents who's doing synchronous work. It's more like PR agent style, research style agents who actually do a lot of batch calls because they can parallelize them. Um, this is definitely another functionality that can be abstracted over time. The other category of middleware feature is tool-facing uh, middleware. So this is very straightforward from MCP server to the third-party services. There's a different workflow uh, and workload characteristics. One, one of my favorite example is error normalization. Um, so how do you bubble up HTTP errors to a agent and explain how to handle this error to the agent? Today, there's no try-catch block for working with LLMs. Like, we have that in procedural programming, but not for LLMs. One funny example I ran into is I was using this UI generation service, uh, and I asked coding agent to, hey, uh, you know, go fetch a very pretty page and then implement on top of this page. So the end service returned um, an error message saying, hey, if you are human, uh, you don't have a credit card on file, so I cannot generate anything. If you're an agent, make sure you tell your human uh, to you know, put in a credit card. And then when I saw the error message, I was wondering what the coding agent will actually do after seeing this error message. Very comically, a uh, cursor agent took this error message and decided to drop the whole service altogether. So it just regenerated the whole page by itself over again. Um, ideally, I actually think uh, it would be great for server developers to actually define what to do for the client in this case. Like, would there be a model that, you know, pop up for me to, you know, uh, click on to the third party service to resolve the error? Would it be something else? All of that needs to be defined. Um, another very useful tool facing middleware feature will be PII reduction. Uh, all of us probably copy paste a lot of things in either, you know, cloud desktop or cursor, uh, but it is very straightforward if we have a layer between server and third party to reduct these kind of information. Lastly, um, some of the tool calls felt like workflow orchestration. If you're into, you know, system engineering, have, you know, used things like ingest and temporal, it felt like a long transactional workload that's not defined as such today. Um, so case in point, if I'm calling um, a sending email API and it errors, do I want to, you know, keep calling it for the next five minutes? Do I want to do step off retry? Do I want to, you know, like, you know, switch to a different service? Um, that's another layer that would be very interesting to build. So you might be wondering, why are we talking about middleware now after all most of the uh, workloads we see is uh, people like us kind of being on the command line or being on, being on tools like Cursor to kind of prompt the model to do things. On a very high level, MCP is a protocol. Uh, it's a very good protocol, it's very thoughtful, but it's not infrastructure. This is like comparing REST protocol to all the API infrastructure. I think MCP will have more of adoption if we have more of an infrastructure built out. 
Um, so because this is such a well down protocol, uh, it's so easy to write NCP servers, we have a tool explosion problem. Uh, I see hundreds of tools, like servers being built all day, all day every day. Like everyone I know who has done a API, who has built API has built a MCP server. But the problem is for all of the uh, MCP clients, there's a tool limitation. You can probably add 40 to 60, like I don't know the exact, exact number of tools. So you can't really utilize the long tails. So in this case, if we have a middleware layer that actually manage that to kind of dynamically um, route the tools and then cache the tools and search the tools, it could really give a uh, coding agent or other general agents uh, more of a leg up in, term in terms of capabilities. Um, lastly, this is actually a very interesting one where uh, we're seeing more and more machine initiated workloads picking up. So this is not the type of a workload where me as a developer sitting in front of my computer and click like, cursor, please do this. This is the type of a workload that exists on the runtime. So think about it as like Zapier of the world or a no code, low code tool. Um, you know, while it's running its workload day in and day out, uh, the agent autonomously pick up a tool actually from a MCP server. That's like technical detail in that context. And this type of workloads would be so much more than human generated ones. Uh, it scales more. Um, it grows a lot better over time. So we're seeing the early inning of that. So the demand for that will not be very far. Um, if you're building in this space, obviously I highly encourage you to open source it. Um, the, that's how the ecosystem grows. But if you're thinking about building a product or anything, here's the contact information to reach me. Uh, let me know if you ever want to bounce ideas. But that's the end of my talk. Thank you.